I'd like to ask you to join me in praying for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services this week. It's always my prayer that someone will, will be saved, someone will become a follower of Jesus. Um, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart for us to have a, have a Christmas Eve services and so many people come on Christmas Day and no one become a follower of Christ. I mean, he was born to save people. So will you join me, please, please take a moment right now and pray that somebody will be saved this Christmas here at First Baptist. And then invite people to come, okay, so they can hear the gospel of Jesus. Today we are in Revelation chapter 17. Um, I mentioned yesterday that the seventh bowl of wrath that is described at the end of chapter 16 briefly uh, portrays the destruction of Rome, God's judgment on the city of Rome and the empire of Rome. In chapter 17, that judgment, that destruction is described in great detail. So look at verse 1. He says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth commit acts of immorality, etc. Remember, Rome was a, a world, it was an empire that dominated many, many nations. And, and uh, while economically and militarily it was successful, it was morally corrupt, which eventually led to its downfall. Um, and persecuted the church. So it, verses 1 and 2 are, are an introductory statement. I'm going to show you, the angel says to John, I'm going to show you this great harlot who sits on many waters and the judgment that God's going to pour out on her. Then starting in verse 3, he moves into a detailed description of what he had just talked about in verses 1 and 2. So here's the harlot on, sitting on waters. Now let me show you her judgment. And so uh, it starts in verse 3, all these blasphemous names. And remember, we previously talked about how they had the cult of emperor worship. You could worship all these idols and gods, but you also had to pay homage to the emperor, and that's why Christians were often persecuted. Um, in verse 4, the woman, this great harlot, is clothed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, etc. Well, now those are the signs, the colors, etc. of royalty. In verse 5, on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon. Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Babylon, Babylon was the ancient empire that conquered Judea and destroyed Jerusalem in 587 B.C. And, 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 and led to the great dispersion of Jews for 70 years, the captivity to Babylon. Well, it was very common in the first century for Rome to be referred to as Babylon, the new Babylon. So it's, he's talking about Rome here. In verse 6, I saw the woman, also this great harlot, Rome, drunk, with what? Booze? No. Drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the witnesses of Jesus, persecuting God's people, martyring God's people, um, being in Rome and standing uh, on, the, on, on, on the ground where they used to race those chariots where Christians were martyred. Being in the Colosseum in Rome, drunk with the blood of the saints, the persecution of God's people in the first and second centuries. Verse 9, here is the mind which has wisdom. He says, if you really want to understand and be wise and understand this, know this. The seven heads, all right, the great harlot, seven heads, etc. The seven heads are seven mountains, Okay. These are figurative terms. So the seven, it's not that she actually has seven heads. The seven heads are figurative for the seven mountains on which the woman sits. Rome is known in history as the city on seven hills. And then uh, verses 10 and 11, and they are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. Verse 11, the beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is one of the seven, and he goes to destruction. And man, that's a tongue twister, but 
there was this legend, this myth, if you will, in the last half of the first century that Nero, the evil emperor of Rome who had burned the city and blamed the Christians and persecuted the Christians for it, had died, and that Nero would later be resurrected, would come back and be emperor again. That's what it's talking about. So this dates Revelation to the last 50 years of the first century. It's probably one of, if not the last books written that are in our New Testament. Um, and and uh, I believe it was written probably during the, when John was a very old man during the time of Diocletian, the Roman emperor who was persecuting the Christians in, in Asia and that part of the world. Now in verse 15, he said to me, the waters which you saw, remember the harlot, sits on many waters. Well, in verse 15, he says, the waters, so he's going to tell us what the waters are. The waters which you saw where, where the harlot sits, where Rome sits, are the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Rome was an empire that dominated other nations and cultures and people groups. And so the waters, see, the, the empire, the city of Rome is the capital, but it's an empire built on the backs of, of all these other peoples, all these other nations. And so the harlot sits on those waters, which is a picture of all these other nations she had conquered and dominated. Um, verses 16 and 17. Then, and, and, and the ten horns which you saw and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and will burn her up with fire. For God, notice this, has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose. In other words, God's purpose will be the same as their purpose. And by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. In other words, some of those nations that Rome ruled are going to be the ones that God will eventually use to rise up and destroy Rome. And, and, and because Rome was their dictator, they hated Rome and wanted to, wanted, wanted to destroy her. Well, God wanted to judge Rome, so they had the same purpose God had, and he, he, he put it in their heart, and he used them to judge the city of Rome as the... You often hear in history and other things about the barbarians who conquered Rome. These outlying tribes and people groups and nations that eventually, gradually uh, overcame Rome until eventually the city itself was invaded and conquered. Now, verse 18, the woman, so this harlot, sits on these waters, these nations. The woman, this harlot, Verse 18, the woman whom you saw is what? The great city. The great city, which reigns over the kings of the earth. Rome, the capital of the ancient Roman Empire. That's what he's talking about. And remember, Revelation 2 and 3, he's writing this letter to seven very real churches in the first century who were being persecuted by Roman authorities in the Roman province of Asia. And he's saying to them, Rome's judgment is coming and it is deserved. Now, just some thoughts. You and I, and it's natural, it's natural, tend to see history, world events through a very small, very narrow lens. We focus on now. We focus on a brief few years. We focus on our lifetime. But God takes a much broader, wider, longer view of history and world events. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And God's plans in this world, his purpose in this world is always unfolding. But you and I may not live long enough to see it unfold. You see, our life is like a moment and God's big plan. And in our life, we may not see. See it all unfold. Um, 
God can and does use evil nations to judge other evil nations. That's what he did in this story. God used in the Old Testament the evil nation of Babylon to judge his own people. He's, uh, Jeremiah makes that very, very clear. Believers in the first century died at the hand of the Romans. There were people who heard this letter read in their churches. John had written it to them. They heard, they heard this read and knew that Rome would fall, but they didn't live to see it. They died. They only saw it from heaven. If your belief system and your approach to faith is such that it demands everything happen in your lifetime, that it demands the plan of God unfold in, in a time frame where you can see it. If your belief system is such that, that eventually everything has to work out during your life, be solved in your lifetime, you're probably going to at times be disappointed because God has a longer plan than just your 50 or 80 or 90 years on earth. And just like some of these saints died before seeing the plan of God unfold, sometimes that happens in my life and in your life. Are you okay with that? You see, if you think everything has to, you know, I may go through a brief season of bad, but, but it all has to work out. While I'm here to see it, your faith is going to be easily shattered when it doesn't work out in your lifetime because sometimes God's plan in history takes longer then you will live. But knowing <laughs> that it works out gives us strength for our life. I love how Hebrews talks about how some of the saints of the Old Testament, Abraham included, looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. They, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't see it in their lifetime. Abraham never saw his descendants become a great nation. God's plan took a lot longer than Abraham's lifetime to unfold. But Abraham knew it was going to happen, and it did. God told these believers, Rome will fall. It took longer than their lifetime to happen, but it did happen. And there are things God's using me to do and you to do and things that we want to see unfold, and they're going to unfold, but it may be after we're in glory. But because we know they're coming, it's going to happen, it's okay. Our faith remains strong. God is going to judge every Babylon, every Rome, every nation, every group, every person. And it's why we need the precious blood of Jesus to save us from the judgment and wrath of God. And this Christmas, I celebrate Jesus and the fact that he saves me. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you tomorrow.